Alrighty, folks, today we are going to be talking about electron states. And here in this little animation, you can see an example of kind of like an animated Bohr model of lithium. And what we are looking at is lithium in its ground state. And we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. All right, so I want you to go ahead and set up your notes. Our topic for today is electron states, and our essential question is, how are electrons arranged around an atom? Go ahead and pause the video, set up your notes, and then uh, play the video once you're ready to go. Our learning target for today is I can compare and contrast ground, st and ground states and excited states. All right, first thing we need to talk about is valence electrons. And so um, when we made our uh, Lewis dot diagram periodic table, you'll remember that we took our Bohr model and we took, we uh, stopped drawing all of the electrons except that outermost layer of electrons. And that outermost layer of electrons is the valence electrons. These are electrons in the outermost shell of an atom, and they are going to be the most important electrons in an atom because they are the most active electrons in an atom. They are the ones that are available to interact with other atoms. And we represent them using Lewis dot diagram. So once again, we've done the Lewis dot diagram uh, periodic table. Uh, you for a Lewis dot diagram, you just write the um, the actual symbol Cl for chlorine, and then you only draw dots for each of the valence electrons. So chlorine has seven valence electrons, so you draw seven dots around it, and these are the electrons that. What question does the previous slide answer? So valence electrons actually play a really, really big role on how the periodic table is organized. And for the most part, the vertical columns on the periodic table, these are called groups, and we'll talk more about that uh, later. Um, those vertical columns group together elements with the same number of valence electrons. Um, and so at the top of those groups, you actually have these Roman numerals, or sometimes you have a number followed by the letter A, and that number or that Roman numeral is going to be the number of valence electrons. So everything in group one here has one valence electron. In group two, you've got two valence electrons. Three, you've got three. Four, you've got four. Five, you've got five. Six, six, seven, seven. And then this group over here of noble gases, um, you can kind of, or it's it's going to be labeled as eight, but in reality, uh, it's kind of better to think about it as either zero or just a full shell, because um, radon, xenon, krypton, argon, and neon they all have eight valence electrons or a full outer shell. Helium has two valence electrons, however that first electron level, remember, can only hold a maximum of two electrons. And so that is still a full outer shell for helium. Um, the number of valence electrons are responsible for many of the properties, specifically chemical properties of an atom. And we're gonna get into that later, but for now we just wanna know what are valence electrons and how can you find them on the periodic table? Um, Anything that's not or so you'll kind of notice there's that little dip in the periodic table, what we call transition metals that's not included here. That's because in transition metals, valence electrons get kind of uh, confusing. So we're not talking about those. We're only talking about the ones represented here. And once again, we're going to get more into this. What question does the previous slide answer? All right, so electron energy. Um, so now that we know what those outermost electrons are, now let's actually talk about how those electrons uh, can move within an atom. And um, it has to do with the amount of energy that they have. So even though you only have electrons in the uh, shells that, uh, you know, they fill up the shells as they go, the other shells, there are empty shells that still exist, they're just empty. And the closer a electron shell is to the nucleus, there's going to be lower energy 
and it's just a lower level. So the farther out you get, because remember the nucleus is positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. And so um, electrons are going to be attracted to that nucleus. And so electrons that are farther out, they're going to have more energy so they can be farther from that uh, positive uh, nucleus because they're negatively charged. So you're gonna have to have some energy to overcome that attraction between positive and negative. So. Uh, you have the lower level with lower energy, higher e level with higher energy, and electrons can move from a lower level to a higher level uh, and back. It's just that that energy is very different, and it requires a lot of energy to move between the two levels. So we have two types of states for electrons. We have ground state and this is the lowest state of energy for the electrons in an atom so those Bohr models that we've been drawing those have all been ground state um, atoms ground state electrons because they're in the lowest possible energy level any higher state of energy for the electrons in an atom is called an excited state so if an electron jumps from uh, a valence electron jumps from its uh, outermost energy level up to an empty energy level that would be an excited state and it requires a lot of energy to do that so just be aware of that and in your packet um, I think it's labeled handout six if you turn to that uh, we will have a uh, kind of it shows what we see or what um, you would describe as ground state and excited state so that jump that takes place what question does the previous slide answer all right so We've talked about the fact that there are these two states and that there are different energy levels involved. And so how do the electrons actually move? Well, you have to add energy to an electron in order to get it to an excited state. Just think about uh, anything that gets excited. It's because it's energetic. And so the same thing is true for electrons. Um, when you add energy to them, they become excited. And that energy uh, can come in a lot of forms. Uh, it can come in the form of heat. It can come in the form of electricity. There's a lot of ways that... Um, that uh, electron can get that energy to move to an excited state. Now, the really important thing is, uh, is that that energy comes into the atom, the electron jumps to an excited state, but then the electron is going to move back down. That is what is energetically beneficial to the electron is to move back down from the excited state to the ground state. Well, what does it do with that energy that it just picked up? Well, that energy is released as a photon and that photon is what makes light so a photon is a particle of light so let's think really quickly here um if you have ever uh if you've got like an electric element stove uh for example or maybe uh you've stuck a piece of metal like a coat hanger into a fire uh, anytime a piece of metal gets really, really hot, uh, you're adding a lot of thermal energy to that piece of metal. And after it's really, really hot, it'll start to glow. And that is because some of the electrons in that metal, they have gone to an excited state. And now they are moving from that excited state down to a ground state. And part of the energy that they release is going to be the photons of that um, metal glowing. So you actually see this happen all the time. So on your handout, you have the example of a ground state, which is that lower state, the excited state. And the, also when excited electron decays or moves from an excited state to a ground state, it emits a photon, which is a particle of light. What question does the previous slide answer? All right, folks, I want you to go ahead and pause this video, take the four question ungraded quiz, and then come on back and we'll go over the correct answers. What are valence electrons? Valence electrons are the outermost electrons in an atom. What do elements in the same vertical column of the periodic table have in common? And they are all going to have the same number of valence electrons. What is it called when an electron gains energy and moves to a higher energy level? That is going to be it's an excited, it's in its excited state. When an electron moves from an excited state to a ground state, what is produced? And that is going to be a 
photon, not a proton, a photon. So if you answered those questions that way, you should get 100%. Alrighty, folks. So go ahead and uh, self-assess on a scale of one to five. How well do you understand electron states? One is you are super lost, and five is I could teach you better or teach this better than you, old man. So uh, hopefully you are doing all right with this. We will go over this again tomorrow. If you are super lost, as always, please feel free to reach out to your teacher. Have a great day.